Welcome on board our Sirius 310DS. I'm Thorsten Schmidt, the owner of Sirius Yachts, and I'm going to show you around this boat. If you haven't come across our deck saloon concept, it might redefine your way of thinking of living on board and sailing a boat. If you haven't seen our little one, our 30 feet boat, I'm pretty much sure there are a lot of surprises for you about the variations, about the accommodation and the size of the inside, of the interior you got on our boats and about the quality we are building them in. So let's have a look around. Coming into our deck saloon, you notice the first big difference to other boats because we don't have washboards, we have a wheel door. And you're not limba dancing down eight steps into the boat, but you stay literally on the same level like the cockpit and just sit down either at the entire helm or over here in the settee. In here, it's all about visibility. You are actually on the same eye level like the crew in the cockpit. Um, you have a full 360 degree vision and you have your interhelm, your galley and your saloon all on the same eye level with this wonderful view around here. So literally you can see this as an extension to the cockpit which means even while sailing um, you can sit down here out of the wind, out of the sun, sit on cushions, do things which you normally won't think of doing while sailing. You can sort out some pictures on a computer, send some emails, um, um, prepare some lunch or some dips for dinner in a galley or do your chart work while you are underway. In fact, you see even a bit more from inside here than you would see on any other boat from the outside because you have a view under the sails. So even if you're responsible for the, for the helm and for the course, you switch on autopilot, you come in here and you do whatever you want to do, just have a look around um, uh, every few minutes or seconds, whatever the course affords, and um, you just be comfy um, in a different place than the cockpit while sailing. Um, this deck saloon concept will be such a change for you for living on board because you might not have always people on board who are totally into sailing so they can just sit in here and enjoy while you're sailing while underway. You might say with children um, they normally get bored very fast outside don't want to wear all these so they just sit in here but then they play and want to show you and want to show the, what want your attention and well it's all on the same eye level so you just go in while underway and see everything around um, stay in contact with your crew. It's also a security thing because you see if help is needed and then with the two steps out and a big door you're just out in a few seconds. Also, um, this is a very social place. The door is a bit offset, which means we have a real round settee here, which could easily seat six um, uh, on a very comfortable and nice evening. And then look at the views. It's just this possibility to see all the surrounding, to have this real 360 degrees. I always ask myself, who would accept a holiday cottage uh, without windows? Or book one in a sutter or in a cellar? So um, if we are sailing because we like nature, we probably want to see it. So with all this visibility around here on an anchorage in a harbour or at sea, it's just fantastic because you have all this landscape around you and you have the big windows like you would like to have at home. So sliding out of the settee here, you're standing in the galley and again you're on the same eye level like the people and your friends sitting in a saloon or like the crew outside in the cockpit and whether you prepare um, um, some lunch or some dips for dinner or the dinner itself you're not cast away you're on the same level and you have a wonderful view out here so going over to here 
So sitting at the end of a helm, um, you have everything what you need in control here. It's your plotter, it's your steering, it's your engine control just here. You have the view to the sails, you have the door just next to you in, uh, if you have to go out. And um, well, you um, can steer the boat comfortably from in here. You don't need to have a wheel today. We often do that electronically with a little wheel on a fly-by-wire control. Um, and you find yourself quite often running under autopilot, just sitting here, looking around, checking your charts or the way to go. If you're on a seaway, um, you have to brace yourself, or you can brace yourself over here, um, and um, uh, sitting quite comfy and quite secure here. And if you don't want to rely on the electronic charts and have your paper charts, they're just stored over here in our um, chart table. And you can take them out and put them into the big table and walk on them while you are on the same eye level, while you have everything under control and see actually where you're going, where you're heading. In uh, very rough seas, I find myself often standing here, braced like that, and um, uh, having the chart just in front of me, having all the visibility, um, but being out of the elements, and, um, uh, and just, just check and be secure and, and see that everything goes right. So we are in the galley of the 310 now, and the most exceptional feature of the galley is again the visibility all the way around, the short ways to the main table. But then you find all the essentials um, uh, for a galley in here. Here's a cooker, hop, might have a grill if you like. Um, here's a proper front opening fridge with a little ice box in it. You can have an extra cooling compartment or even um, deep freeze um, down there. And then we have loads of storage. Um, you see the glasses and um, dishes and all that are behind here. Most customers bring us their glasses, cutlery and crackery, and we find a way to fit it in. Um, because we have lots of drawers here. This one is more um, for the NAS station. But then you have drawers all over here. There are shelves. They're all soft clothing, quite big, very accessible, um, fitted dishes in here, more drawers, and you can brace yourself very good here while cooking because it's not a long open plan thing. You can slide around here and hold yourself um, whichever way. And, um, and then we have the huge floorboards here. And there's a bit of a surprise for most of the customers for the first time on board. Have a look. This is the storage you will find under our floorboards. Um, this is right deep below. That's why the helmsman or the skipper wants to have the weight um, just above the keel in the center of the boat. In this country, it even stays naturally cooled. But the best thing is it's very, very easy accessible. It's not under cushions. You don't have to get your guests up to get to the next bottle of wine. It's just below here. It goes on all the way. And then, surprise, more drawers. So directly at the companionway, you'll find a huge oil skin locker, um, which takes all the oilies and rubber boots and life jackets for um, a crew of six. So that goes out all the way to the outside. It's quite deep, it's vented to three sides. So um, all your cupboards in the cabins will just be for your smoking and the short back one. So because all the big stuff and all the wet stuff goes in here, short ways out. Then you have much more storage down here. Uh, it could be um, cool box as well. Um, you have the double bins under here, um, more storage below. And if you want to do any um, configuration on your electrics, electronics, or want to check, this is all very accessible just behind here, all very neatly cabled all the way through. You get a book with about 100 pages um, about electronics and all the build of the boat, um, which shows all the diagrams, so it should be easy to find your way around there later on.
So far I've introduced the Dexaloon concept on this boat to you. So you've seen all about and heard all about the visibility of this boat and you've basically seen most of the upper level of our um, interior layout which we have here. But I've promised you a few surprises um, on the interior and on variations. And um, how does um, 18 different interior versions sound as a surprise? So if you have a look to our graphics and to the layouts which we have here, um, you do all you see all the versions we have built so far, and these are just the basic versions. You can even cross cross mix them, so that gets up to much much more version. Um, um, the reason is we are on a 31 feet boat, so um, if you want to have everything on one boat um, by 35, um, if you want to have a 310, you can spec it in the way it suits your needs best, but you have to compromise on one or the other function. You can't have all and all in, in the maximum size you want to have. Therefore, 31 feet is just a bit too small. And that leads to all these different um, uh, variations which we have here. So just to concentrate on the two basic ones, or the two most opposite ones, um, on the layer which lies under the saloon area and in the front of the boat, on this very boat, um, you can have a front cabin, um, a hat, the hats, um, a separate shower cabin, and a cupboard and a floor all in front of the mast support. On the opposite version, the for two version, in front of the mast support, you will find just one very, very huge cabin with a wonderful island bed, which will suit a 40 feeter. Going on on this version, behind the main bulkhead, you will find a huge head compartment, which is the same size like an hour 38 years, and then the workshop. Whereas in this version here, you find behind the main bulkhead a very, very huge master cabin, which will surprise you as well. So let's have a look. We are in the owner's cabin of our um, uh, 310 now, and this is the cabin which is absolutely central. It's just above the keel, in the very center of the boat. And there are a lot of positive points on that. First of all, you don't have the slamming, which you might have in aft cabins, and you don't have much movement because it's just above the keel. This is where circumnavigators will sleep, um, on the big empty 70 feet racing boats, just in the center of the boat where you have the littlest movement. Um, here's a lee cloth living under here, which you can put up. And um, then you have a perfect sea burst, or actually two perfect sea bursts. But for normal days, it's just so comfy because you have a bed which is 1.5 meters wide and it's not narrowing to the feet. It goes all the way through in 1.5 meter width and it's 2.15 meters long. Um, well, you have the windows out here, which is quite a treat. Um, uh, um, you have wonderful visibility from here as well. There's more light from the hatches and from the windows up above. And you have a full size standing room, which um, 1.95 meters standing height, cupboards, drawers, more cupboards over there, and uh, well, plenty of room to move around and to enjoy yourself. Coming forwards from the midship's cabin into the hats, you have a private door. Um, and while in here you have full standing height again, um, it's quite a light room, big mirror in front of you. The wash basin is um, so big that you can wash your hair without spilling all the water all around. This swivels away and um, you have an extendable um, water tap here um, to wash yourself. Um, then on most other boats you will find up here no cupboards at all because this is the usual place where the small holding tanks are. We have a huge holding tank of 100 liter in this configuration and this is placed elsewhere. So we have big cupboards here to store all the necessities in the hats and then the big cupboard down there as well. Toilet could be electric. Um, in this very layout um, we have no separate shower cabin which could be opposite of this room as a totally separate room. Um, this customer has decided on a shower integrated into the hats. For that reason you has, has slap fasteners all the way around and also around here that the curtain which you hang up doesn't stick to your body. And um, then we have the shower control and um, the shower um, tap which hooks in, lifts in here, hooks into this. And um, you have a floorboard which you lift out. There is um, shower tray um, beneath 
and uh, this is all sealed and the, cu the curtain will um, cover all the rest of it. So if you are finished with showering and throw the curtain out of the hatch, um, the mirror might be misted, but all the rest of the um, room is still dry and ready for use after that. We are in the forward cabin of our 310 here and um, what you see here is the layout, the cabin layout of the forward comfort version. Um, like on the other versions um, you have um, a, a nice um, double bed here um, which is 6 foot 9 in the shortest distance, 2.5 meters. Um, it's a very airy and light room. You have lots of room in front um, to maneuver around um, hatches, light from the sides. Um, a nice sitting area where you can put on your shoes and socks. Um, or um, leave your clothes when you um, go to bed. And um, then we have nice drawers down here. Um, there's obviously more storage um, under, the, under the mattresses, but this is very easy, accessible. And these drawers are so much nicer to organize than normal shelves. If I stand up, you could see that I have a uh, six foot nine headroom, that's 1.95 meters. That's what you will find in all our cabins down below here, midships cabin, the hats, and the foreship cabin. In the saloon, we have even six foot eight, which is 2.02 um, .02 meters um, standing height and um, to make you comfortable in here. In uh, this very version we are here, you find in the fore cabin um, a big um, hanging locker here uh, with more storage underneath, um, shelves around here and a quite open plan. Um, you remember I've told you we have 18 different interior versions. Um, some of these variations come from the front cabin. Um, in um, opposite to this version you can have the standard version which have a bulkhead all the way down here and a door into the triangular um, uh, bedroom with an infill which you can take out like on most other boats this size. Um, um, then you will have a huge cupboard on this size here but you can also specify a separate shower cabin which is uh, directly opposite to the hats and it's a really really usable room um, because it's all sealed all the way around. It's an hatch in there and it's just a shower cabin. Um, of course you can hang can hang clothes um, which you have washed or your wet gear but you know we have the, um, uh, the uh, wet locker directly at the entrance as well. Um, this shower cabin is very usable. You have a seat and can stand up if you're not too tall um, in, and it won't take up all the space. You will still have a cupboard all the lengths um, down here in front of it but the floor to the front cabin will be a bit narrow. Um, this is the point where we start to discuss about other versions um, with customers um, in opposite to this version where you have the hats, the separate shower cabin, the cupboard and the um, bedroom in this front, in front of the mast step here. Um, you can have an R42 version in front of the mast step, one big huge master bedroom in the front with an island bed uh, with the pillows facing forward and a huge vast area in front of that and um, then you can have the shower cabin still here which doesn't take so much space up in, in this version. The hats will be further back and I'm going to show you that on the next boat. Talking of different interior layouts, I'm sitting now in the forward cabin of our Comfort for Two version. We are still on the Zeris 310DS, we are still 31 feet in length and you have still the same saloon, interior steering and galley. But the lower level is in a totally different design. On the other boat we have seen in front of the main bulkhead, in front of the mast steps, the hats, the uh, possibility for a separate shower cabin, the cupboard, the seat and the 6 foot 9, 2.0 five meter lengths bed. On this boat in front of the master um, bulkhead in front of the mast step we've just one big vast room. With this very um, spacious king side bed um, which is big enough to have the pillows forward so you don't turn around in bed you can step in on both sides. Um, you have cupboards to both sides, drawers underneath, much storage here and the impression the room like you would expect on a 40 feet boat. Standing up you have full headroom all the way through. Um, down here look into the cupboards, huge drawers and cupboards to both sides. While I'm standing here now in a position where on the other layout the heads were, the heads on this boat have moved one bulkhead backwards. We are in the heads of the 4-2 cabin layout here. This is 
one bulkhead further back where you have seen forward the um, uh, the entrance to the main cabin to the center cabin um, these are the um, GRP parts we've used in our 38 feet boat um, you have a 70 centimeter wide wash basin here um, um, lots of cupboard space storage space here and the toilet is um, in a midships position this is really the center of the boat um, uh, right in the middle very little movement and you sit quite braced in here if you're in a seaway um, this customer have opted for a shower cabin inside the heads again so you have a floorboard to lift up um, and a shower curtain to hang around yourself but as I said you can have a separate shower cabin in the front area um, which doesn't take up so much space in this very version because the front cabin is so vast in the photo version. We are back in the saloon of our Series 310 DS and as we are here in the four bed um, uh, version um, we have the um, nice central cabin under the saloon here but we have also the access to the um, engine compartment. And this is just easy um, to open up this seat here, fold that forward and then you take out this panel and open up the engine room and then you can easily step down there's room for your feet down here and you can sit down here and have all of the engine parts just in front of you um, it's a belt, um, water coolant, oil, your dipstick um, it's really all easy accessible you have all the other panels around from the cockpit lockers to open you can take this away, this is just standing loosely um, and just let you know we put the engine in as the last part um, of the boat building so one and a half weeks before delivery it just comes down the companionway slides in here so it's really really easy to maintain and, um, and easy to service. We are now in the saloon of the uh, 310 with the 42 version. Um, 42 means for two people, so uh, we don't have four um, beds, two cabins down here, but we've just a big, huge front cabin and the heads beneath. And so there's a bit of a leftover under here. I've showed you the entrance to the um, engine on the other boat, and here we have a real man cave or a small workshop down here. So same entrance, you just open that up, take this board out, and then there's a step to pop down. If you come down here into our workshop, you will actually be surprised how much space you find in here. You have your calorifier here, tanks, all the water systems up here, and all the electric electronic is built in here, um, heating very accessible here and um, there are various possibilities to use this room. If you um, are down in very warm climate you might have a generator and an air condition in here. We had a customer from the US who had a house size washing machine and a house size tumble dryer standing next to it. Um, this actual boat even have a mattress down here and a sliding hatch out there to make that as an, as an extra bed. Um, we had boats which no need of so much technique where we had built in a uh, normal double size um, bed like we have on the four bed version just not with the um, exclusive and nice room in front of it to step in here we even had a nordic two-person dry sauna in the fora part of here which actually works very well <laughs> also um, you have the engine compartment directly here with the accessibility of um, uh, your water oil dipstick um, your um, impeller pump, everything just in front of you while you're sitting on the toolbox. It's your diesel filter just here. Um, so really everything around you and of course a lot of storage space where you can have your um, uh, extra tools, spare parts, everything not between tomatoes and potatoes but in one room. Very good accessible. If you're coming through the companionway into the cockpit of our Series 310 DS, which is actually on the same level like the saloon and the interior steering and only two wide steps down under the big glass hatch into the galley area, you find yourself in a very comfortable um, and sheltered cockpit. This cockpit is quite low and deep down to the waterline, um, 
because we don't need aft cabins because we have the wonderful cabin down below so this could be quite far down which means you're only making this movement in the seaway instead of this movement in the higher cockpit at the same time we have this high combings all the way around here um, you're totally enclosed and um, you have comfy wide seats which are actually very nice curved so you're sitting very braced and you can brace yourself on the opposite bench if the boat heals. Sitting here you are sheltered behind the deck house where normally the spray hood would be. The difference is you're looking through real glass, it's no spray hood, it doesn't blur your vision and you have a wonderful view through the big windows. Also you stay in contact with your crew inside. Children might play on a table um, or your wife might be out of the window, out of the sun and um, they, know, they see what you're doing out here and we have a real door, no washboard, so you're very easy staying in contact with your crew on board. At the same time, this cockpit is particularly designed for single-hand sailing because if you're just the two of you, you need a boat which is designed that you be able to um, handling everything alone on board. For that reason, the main sheet is just here in front of you. Um, of course, your tiller or a wheel steering if you prefer. Your engine throttle is just here, which is a neat feature because you can, um, if you're standing up, you have this just in the position where you want to have it. And while you're sailing, you take it away and there's nothing where sheets can catch, catch on it. Um, of course there are different options, you can have the throttle down there as well. Um, the Genoa winches are quite set back so you can operate them as the handsman from here as well. And then of course with the tiller steering you have lots of other wonderful sailing positions, sitting positions from where you can sail the boat. This extends, you can sit up here lean against lean against the guardrail and steer the boat from here or you can sit a bit more sheltered directly behind the deck's house and have a wonderful vision over the deck's house sidewards of the deck's house or if you're sitting down here through the glass of the deck's house if you stand up in the cockpit you will find that the deck's house is much lower than normally the spray hood would be. It's only 1.35 meters so you have a wonderful vision over the boat and can see everything what you need to see. The coach roof of the deck's house have an overhang in the front which means every spray which you might get onto the deck will be stopped on the coach roof so you stay relatively dry and very sheltered in here. Talking of the shelter and the comfort and security you will feel in the cockpit here, this is not only related to the design of the cockpit, it is also related to the hull shape. We have a deep front section, so the bow of the boat goes deep under the waterline, on this boat about 40 centimeters. It's very, very sharp cut, which means the boat will cut through the waves, not like many other modern boats today, slide onto the wave and smash down. Um, also, um, most boats today have an underwater um, line which looks like this, which makes them healing onto the nose and want them to go into the wind. Um, we have a relatively wide cockpit here, but if you look at the boat from the back, you will see that the water line narrows very much on the transom um, to the back of the boat, which makes an actual water line which doesn't look like this, but like this. And if our boat heals, it will stay into forward direction. And at the same time, if you're sitting out here on this water line instead on this, you're not making this movement in the seaway, then rather this movement here. There are other details which add to the comfort and security on board. Um, one might be that if you have crew which is not that experienced or not that much in sailing, you can get them out of your way and make them comfortable in the pushpit seats here. This is also a very nice place, not only at sea but also for red wine in the evening with a nice sun down there. You can pop up your legs and just feel comfy here. Here you see our um, glass door, which is actually even bulletproof. It also shelters your uh, instruments, which are just in the middle position in front of your cockpit, which might be an important feature because everybody can see them here. If you're standing up behind the wheel or behind the tiller or everywhere in the cockpit, um, you can see the depths and speed and other important information. Also, some practical things. We have a huge locker here, which takes all your halyards. So you have, again, security because everything is kept nice and clean and everything stays in there. Then we have cubby holes on both sides of the cockpit um, to store things away and quite some impressive cockpit lockers down here. 
because we don't like aft cabins. Um, we have all this space here behind the um, cockpit bulkhead for um, storage space. So this side of the cockpit lockers is very organized. You have your boxes with lots of little bits, spare parts and cleaning tools was in there. Then you have hangers for all your ropes, your fenders in here, the gas bots, box with the gas bottles. And then there are steps down there and on the front bulkhead of the four bed version, you will find all the technic. It's just in plain view from the tiller. Um, you have your, um, your water filter for the engine, coolant, um, the tank, um, and all the electric heating, everything on top there. So if you need to go, need to do service, you just step down these two steps and then you have access to the engine on this side and all the technic around on this side. You sit here very sheltered, leaning back against the deck's house. This cockpit bench is um, 2.05 meters or a 6 foot 9 length in length. And um, the flexi teak which you see here is all standard. Um, on this side, we have another very, very deep cockpit locker. Most customers have their rubber dinghy, outboard engine, um, two folding bikes, and lots of other stuff in there. While you're still in the deep and secure cockpit of our Zeris 310, you can tether yourself on onto the jack stays, which are running in the midships position of the boat, which is the only position where it really keeps you on board. But while you're going out here, you have very good handholds, just on the right height, and good bracing onto the fixed guardrail, which are running all the way alongside the boat. Coming forward, you have your um, opening gates to the side, as a side opening, and then you come to the rig here, to the rigging. And um, while you're leaving the security of the good handhold here and the rigging here, the foot rail, the gun rail, starts to raise up, up to 120 millimeters, to give you a good foothold while you have to go further forward, if you have to go further forward in a seaway, because you can walk actually in the foot rail all the way forward. Talking of various rig options, you can actually specify whatever you like. Um, you can have a furling main, furling boom, or just a simple slap reefing, single line reefing, all operated from the cockpit. Um, to add to security and to more performance, you could also specify the cutter stay, like seen on this boat. The self tacking jib is always standard, um, but on this boat you have a second furler in front of that with a big jenny attached, which means you can choose the right sail while on passage without leaving the cockpit in one and a half minutes. This also means you never have to half furl your sails and destroy the shape of the sail because you have your self stacking jib for strong winds or if you do a lot of tucks or in lighter winds um, you fly your jenny up to the wind or downwind even in stronger wind um, situations but you have either the jenny furled out and if you find out it's too much wind for a course you're sailing um, you furl the self stacking jib out in the shadow of the jenny and then furl the jenny in in the shadow of the self stacking Chip. This also adds to the performance and to the general speed of your passage because if you're out in 4 5 per 4 you probably would never go out with a big jenny but if you come around a corner somewhere or around an island somewhere and go to a, to a downwind course you can fill out your jenny even in force 5 or 6 and be securely pulled by the jenny rather than pushed by the mainsail. In the front here you also feel quite secure because of the fixed guardrail. The bow speed enables you to go past the furlers, you don't have to climb over them and in the front you can simply open your pulpit and there are steps which you hang in here and then you can go down to the jetty or up to the quay very easily. For the anchor arrangement, you have nothing on deck that's all clean, nothing to hook sheets behind or tip over, um, but it's all built under deck. Um, you also specify what kind of anchor you like to have, um, and the anchor goes through the bowl onto the anchor winch um, in here. You can have 100 meters of anchor chain if you need to, and um, of course there are other solutions for mooring ropes with little rolls in front which you can mount there to get through there. 
We are back on the six year old um, 310 in a 42 version just to show you a bit more of the variability and of the variations you can get. Uh, in the cockpit here you can have a steering um, wheel of course with your plotter in front of you and your main sheet a bit raised, um, easy accessible from the helmsman position. This of course shortens, makes the cockpit a bit smaller compared to the tiller version where you just fold up the tiller and have the full width cockpit in front of you with a huge cockpit table, long cockpit table. This cockpit table is slightly smaller but it's always attached. You just fold it up and fold it out and um, you have an, um, a fold up seat there in front of the door um, to sit comfortably four persons around there. More variations compared to the other boat we've seen is the furling boom which you have here can have a furling mast. This boat have only one four stay in front which is even electrically furred compared to the cutter stay. We have an um, backstay extensioner here with a winch handle, beamy knee, well literally everything what you like to have. We are on board of the 310 DS and I'm going to impress you a bit on the maneuverability of this boat. Um, there are a few things which you have to know about the setup of the rudder and the engine. First of all, um, we have a relatively big rudder which um, allows us to have a very good maneuverability. But there's also a special thing on the setup of the, um, of the, um, of the rudder and the engine. First to start with the similarities to other boats. Um, on all the other boats you will find the rudder about here and then you need about 40 centimeters of rudder technique and then in front of that you usually will find about two meters of aft cabin. As we don't like aft cabin with the slapping water in the back we have the engine placed here and the sail drive here which means the propeller is here and the rudder is here. This is a very direct positioning of the um, rudder um, to the propeller. This also means that we can walk, we can work with a prop wash very directly. I'm not talking of prop walk. A prop walk is the direction the propeller walks you, which is always um, on the same side, um, which you can't can't influence. But the prop wash works into both direction equally. And um, because we have the prop working here and the big rudder here, we can just turn the rudder to one side and give a little wash forward. And what happens is, the back of the boat gets kicked over to this side. Turning the rudder over to this side, giving a little wash forward, we just bring the boat over to that side. I'm going directly back into reverse because I want to stay near here and have a look to the flag stuff. This also works into the other way. And back again. This actually means you have the maneuverability as if you would have a back thruster. This boat not even have a bow thruster, of course you could have, but um, because of this very direct prop wash you can turn the boat on the very spot 360 degrees wherever you are and with very little training you see I'm not doing any rocket science, it's just the throttle and the rudder um, you can maneuver her on about seven to eight centimeter to the spot where you want to go. You don't have to go full throttle, you don't have to have the rudder totally in, but you can just maneuver her on a very close quarter, very sensibly, without big drama in it. Going back the other way. And you might turn it all the way out. And bring her a bit away from the danger over there. 
or if this is too far away to get the rope over, you just turn the wheel over to the other side, give a little wash forward, and doing that again. The back of the boat is just kicked over and you're turning in a very small spot on her heels or on her keels or as the English say on a six band. So bringing her back that way, just giving a wash forward going backwards. Actually on this close quarters there's no need to bring the tiller over to the other side because this is just such a short way. So you just leave the rudder like it is, give another wash forward and turn around as you want to have her. As some people have sent me emails after seeing the other maneuverability videos about what kind of back thruster it was, just want to show you again what does take this moment, this movement. If I bring the rudder over to this side, the rudder stands like this, and now the prop wash is kicking on this side of the rudder, kicking the back of the boat over to this side. Showing that. Going backwards and the boat moves over to this side. Now I'm going to turn the rudder over to this side. The rudder stands now this way and the prop wash is going to hit it on this side and kicking the boat over to this side. Doing that again. With this maneuverability, there is hardly any situation where you can't help yourself out of it um, because you're always in a position to turn the boat 360 degrees on the very spot where you are without much space in between. So I'm now more or less 90 degrees to the bay where we are in. I'm going to turn the boat backwards there and then I will show you how you can turn her on close quarters. So as said before, I just bring the rudder over to this side, give a hard wash. The boat moves over to this side and as she is a heavy displacement she will continue the turn so I can ride her into the way where I want to go and if the wind is going to pick me up and will carry the bow over to this side I can do that as often as I like. So if I can't go very fast and I'm not going into the direction where I want to go I'm just doing it again. Bringing the rudder over to this side, giving a wash and I'm redirecting the boat into the direction where I want to have her. So I'm going backwards now. And going to do a 90 degree turn against the wind in this very bow, in this very bay here. The big rudder is helping me. At the moment the bow goes against the wind. And I'm now turning the, wheel, the rudder over to this side and give a hard wash. And you see what happens. The boat is turning on the very spot against the wind through 180 degrees. As soon as I have some space where I can maneuver backwards, of course I can use the rudder in the right direction because it's a big rudder, she will start to turn quite easily, but that will not be enough here. So I'm just turning the rudder over to this side, give a little wash, then I'm turning her over this way, and then I'm going backwards again. Now the wind starts to pick me up and starts to press me over there, but I have a big rudder, and I can turn her in the way I want to go. Not going too fast here. I can slalom her in the bay and I'm going to turn her around another time. 
just going through 90 degrees now against the bow against the wind. She starts to turn now against the wind. And when I have not much space left, I go into forward on the other rudder, on the other side. And the back of the boat is turning. If that wasn't enough, I'm just doing that again. And I'm back in the direction where I came from. I've done a 360 in this relatively narrow bay. This was backwards. Backwards is always a bit more difficult than forward. I'm going to show you how that looks in a forward direction. We're coming into this bay now and you might need some speed because there's quite some wind from the side. At the moment we have about 10-12 knots from the side. So you might just be in a position that you have to turn around. And I'm doing that here just by turning the rudder over to the side, going into backwards to stop the forward motion. And you see the boat continues to turn and I'm nearly through 180 degrees here doing that again turning here on the very spot through 160 just going to do that in here again the other way around that you don't think it's just one-sided just turning the rudder over, turning the bow against the wind, going slightly backwards, the boat continues to turn um, while I'm doing that and if that wasn't enough I'm just giving another push of throttle, another wash against the rudder and we've done a 180 in this bay here without any drama and without the boat thruster and with no back thruster. It was just the throttle, so the prop wash against the rudder. And that could be done with tiller, even with the wheel steering, I really like to do it. I hope I hadn't promised you too much about what I think is the most stunning and variable 31 foot boat on the market with 18 different interior variants, um, 6 different rig options, wheel or tiller. Um, you choose between 7 different keel options in between twin and swing keel. You have the accommodation and the inside space which equals easily a 37, 38 feet boat. Um, and I hope I had surprised you with the maneuverability of this boat and with the build quality and the attention to detail which have gone into that. So I hope you had enjoyed the day together with me on the water with our Sirius 310 ODS. If you'd like to have more information about our yard or our yachts, visit our website under sirius-werft.de or contact me directly. I'm looking forward to hear from you.